Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, I'm back again here with uh, another Android tutorial. This time we're going to be focusing on making a Sudoku game um, in Android. And we're going to be doing this entirely using Kotlin and the new Android architecture components, um, namely view models and lab data. And then also hopefully we'll get to take a look at um, the room database wrapper and start to use that. So. Um, before we get started, I'm just going to give you guys a little bit intro about what the app does right now. Um, basically, what we can do is click around on the app and have a board loaded. And we can use this keypad down here to sort of uh, put numbers into the squares. And then we can also switch to an editing or a, a notes mode where we can put notes in the actual boxes. Um, and then we can also remove them. And then we can use this clear button to clear. And we can do the same. Um, with these regular notes, and then we also can't tap uh, into these predefined things that are defined by the puzzle th itself. And then also when we click, it kind of highlights the entire group that this cell is part of, and then also the row and column that it's part of. Um, yeah, other than that, we also have a timer up here just so the user can see how long they've been playing. And then hopefully we'll be able to add some sort of persistence where there could be multiple games going on, and the user could come in and out and maintain this timer and also their progress on the game. Um, and that will, will be what we do with the room database. Um, so before that, let's just create a new Android Studio project. Um, and we'll call it Sudoku YouTube. You can call it whatever you want. Um, and then make sure you click this include Kotlin support as well. Otherwise, uh, we, won't, we won't be able to use Kotlin, which is pretty much the main purpose, one of the main purposes of this tutorial series. Um, just keep everything default here and then make sure you use empty activity and instead of calling it main activity we'll call it um, play Sudoku activity and then press finish when you're ready and uh, this is gonna take a little bit so I'm just gonna cut the video here and then once you guys are ready you can unpause and continue watching the rest Okay guys, so now that the uh, project is set up, we can get started by just, what we're going to do first is just um, get the layout set up so that we have something to look at. Um, so if we go to Resources, Layout, and Activity Play Sudoku, then we go to this Design tab, we can start putting our buttons in for the keypad for the user to use. Sorry, my computer's a little bit slow with all of this stuff running on it. Um, so just get rid of this hello world. You can just press delete on it. And then we're going to change this constraint layout. Actually go back to text really quick and make this constraint layout um, a relative layout. And then what we're going to do in here is we're going to create a new grid layout. And that's good to go. Just when you highlight over this, press Alt Tab, and we can define the um, valid, the things that need to be there. Um, and then wrap content again. Okay, so now that we have this grid layout here, we can go back to the actual um, design editor, and we can bring these guys in here. And before we do that, actually, the grid layout needs a couple more attributes to it. First things first, we need a number of rows and a number of columns. So row count, we'll just make both of these three for now. And call and count should also be three. So that way we can put our whole keypad in there. We're not going to do delete or edit for now, but we will do that. Um, in a bit. So actually we're going to go back to this XML because it's a lot easier to use and we're just going to create all the buttons. So we have the one button and then we need nine more of these. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay so now we have nine buttons we need to obviously fix uh, all of the names of them. So make the two button the two button, 
three, one, two, three, and four, one, two, four, and five, one, two, five, six. Oh, sorry, this one should be six. Six, seven button, seven, eight button, eight, and lastly the nine button into nine. Okay, and then basically we just need to set the row and column. Um, so the one button should have row zero and column zero as well. And we can go back to our design and just make sure that is what we want. Okay, cool. It looks like it almost did it automatically, but just to be safe, we're gonna copy this in here and change the column to one. The column here should be two. And then for four, it should be row one, column zero. And we can copy this and row one, column one, and then row one, column two. And then lastly, we have row two, column zero, and then row two, column one, row two, column two. Okay. So now let's take a look, make sure it looks right. Okay, cool, that looks good to me. Um, and then what last thing we wanna do is take this grid layout and we're gonna fix it to the bottom. So it should be um, Android align parent bottom, layout align parent bottom and make that true. So it's just aligned to the bottom of its parent. Um, perfect, so now it's at the bottom. And then we could even um, center it horizontally for now. Perfect, so now it's in the center and we have all of our buttons. Um, one, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, cool. Um, now let's just run this to make sure it works. And you guys can set up an emulator to do that if you want. Okay guys, here we can see that we have our layout as expected. So that's good. Um, now we'll just continue and create um, a custom view just for us to use and we'll call this Sudoku board view. So what this view is going to do is it will basically render um, a Sudoku board onto the screen as you saw in the sample app that I showed you. So what we need to do for this is just make a class um, and we'll call it Sudoku board view and then it needs to take two things, a context and an attribute set. These are just two things that it needs to take so that we can use, um, basically we can use the Sudoku board view in our XML as a custom view. So basically what we're doing here is just creating a class called Sudoku board view, and then the constructor takes in a context and attribute set, and then Sudoku board view extends view, and then in its constructor it passes context and attribute set into the view constructor. So it's like calling in the constructor, it's calling super context attribute set. These are just some basic Kotlin things. Um, I'm not gonna really go through everything that happens in Kotlin, but I'll try to give you guys just a little bit of information about, about how the language works compared to Java. Um, but if you guys don't know any Kotlin, I recommend that you look some up and kind of try to get used to it a little bit before doing this tutorial. Um, but yeah, it shouldn't be too hard to pick up since the, the syntax is fairly simple. But anyways, so basically inside this class, what we want to do here is just what we're going to do is we're just going to override the on draw method, which takes a canvas. Um, and basically this canvas allows us to draw whatever would come up on the view. So this is where we'll draw all the numbers, all the lines, things like that. For now, I'm just going to draw a box around the view itself so we can just see that the view is there um, once we put it in the XML. So to do this, we need something called a paint. Um, and basically what a paint um, object is, is it just specifies 
the attributes of how we paint, so like color and things like that. So we'll just call this um, thick line paint, and it'll be a paint object, and then we'll do the apply block, which is a cool Kotlin feature that allows us to basically do a bunch of things to an object without actually having to say the name of the object dot that thing. So we can just do, we can just set style in here pretty easily. And that should be paint.style.stroke, so it won't fill at all. And then the color should be color.black, uh, black. And then just alt enter to import those things again. And then the last thing we want is a stroke width, I believe. And we'll just make that um, four. So in this on draw, we're just gonna do canvas.drawrect and zero float, zero float, width dot two float, height dot two float, and then we pass in the paint that we want to use. So basically this should draw a rectangle from the left side of the screen to the right side and from the top to the bottom. So it'll just be basically a border around the view itself. Okay, so that's all we need to do in here for now. And then what we should do is go back to our XML file and above the grid layout, we're going to put in our own Sudoku board view. And then we want it to match parent, match parent. And we also want to set an ID for this. We'll call this um, Sudoku board view. And then the last thing we want to do Android layout above. And we'll do above this grid layout, which we should also put an ID on this. Um, and this ID will be, we'll call it um, buttons layout. And then layout above should just be buttons layout. Okay, so we can look at our design and see that we should have a Sudoku board view here. And let's run our code again and just make sure um, it looks correct. Okay, guys, here we can see that our uh, view looks exactly as we expected. It just draws a box around what the view should look like. Um, yeah, so that's all we're going to do for this tutorial. I just wanted to get the basic UI laid out. Um, in the next tutorial, we'll start filling in this Sudoku board view and actually have it render an entire grid and then probably let the user select different items. Um, also, I'll be adding uh, a new GitHub repo that I will link in the description. Um, Basically, each branch of that repo will hold the code from each tutorial, so you guys can look step-by-step step at each tutorial, what the code looks like after each tutorial. Um, and I'll post a link to that. So make sure you check that out if um, you just want to look at the code instead of watching the whole tutorial, all of the tutorials. But as always, it's best if you watch the tutorials because there's some explanation there as well. Um, other than that, thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. It Everything helps, so yeah, see you guys next time.